ഹൃദയക ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ തന്നെ നിർനാമത്തിന് മഹത്വം ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കട്ടെ കർത്താവിൽ അനുഗ്രഹിക്കപ്പെട്ടവരെ മലങ്കര സഭയുടെ പ്രഖ്യാപിത പരിശുദ്ധനായ സഭാഭാസ്വരും പരിശുദ്ധ വട്ടശ്ശേരി ഗീവർഗീസ്മാർ ദേവൻദാസ് യൂസ് തിരുമേനിയുടെ എൺപത്തി എട്ടാം ഓർമ്മ പെരുന്നാൾ പരിശുദ്ധ പിതാവ് കവറടങ്ങിയിരിക്കുന്ന കോട്ടയം പഴയ സെമിനാരിയിൽ രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തിരണ്ട് ഫെബ്രുവരി പതിമൂന്ന് മുതൽ ഇരുപത്തിമൂന്ന് വരെ കൊണ്ടാടുക മലങ്കര സഭയുടെ സ്വാതന്ത്ര്യത്തിനും തനിമയ്ക്കും വേണ്ടി അക്ഷീണം പ്രവർത്തിക്കുകയും പ്രതിസന്ധികൾക്ക് നടുവിലും തളരാതെ നിന്നുകൊണ്ട് സ്വാതന്ത്ര്യ ദ്രോഹത്തേക്ക് സഭയെ എത്തിക്കുകയും ചെയ്ത പുണ്യ പിതാവാണ് പരിശുദ്ധ വട്ടശ്ശേരത്തിരുമേനി പരിശുദ്ധ പിതാവിൻ്റെ മധ്യസ്ഥത നമുക്ക് കാവലും കോട്ടയുമായിരിക്കട്ടെ പെരുന്നാൾ ശുശ്രൂഷകൾക്ക് മലങ്കര സഭയുടെ പരമാധ്യക്ഷൻ പൗരസ്യ കാതോലിക്കായി മലങ്കര മധുരാപൗരിതായുമായ പരിശുദ്ധ ബസേലിയോസ് മാർത്തോമ മാത്യൂസ് തൃതിയൻ കാതോലിക്ക വാദത്തിന് മനസ്സുകൊണ്ട് മുഖ്യ കാർമ്മികത്വം വഹിക്കുന്നതും അഭിയുന്നിയ പിതാക്കന്മാർ സഹ കാർമ്മികത്വം വഹിക്കുന്നതുമാണ് ഗവൺമെൻറ്റിൻ്റെ കോവിഡ് നിർദ്ദേശങ്ങൾ പൂർണ്ണമായി പാലിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് പെരുന്നാൾ ശുശ്രൂഷകൾ നിർവഹിക്കപ്പെടുന്നു പെരുന്നാൾ ശുശ്രൂഷകൾ ഓൺലൈനായി സംപ്രേഷണം ചെയ്യുന്നതാണ് പെരുന്നാൾ ദിവസങ്ങളിൽ പരിശുദ്ധത്തിൻ്റെ കബറങ്കൽ വന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നതിനുള്ള ക്രമീകരണങ്ങൾ ചെയ്തു പെരുന്നാൾ ശുശ്രൂഷകൾക്ക് എവരുടെയും പ്രാർത്ഥനയും സഹകരണം ഉണ്ടാകണമെന്ന് അഭ്യർത്ഥി In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Malagara Orthodox Church and the ancient Nazrani community are ever indebted to the sacred memory of St. Dionysius Watersheril of Blessed Memory. He is one who stands like a titan in the 2,000-year-old history of this ancient church. This church is the root of the apostolic work of St. Thomas. He is believed to have landed in South India at Kranganur coast in 52 AD. And from then on, there is a Christian community in this part of the country. It has been the marvel of historians that how can a Christian community remain for 2,000 years almost in an isolated manner. But history bears witness that this church, which remained in almost an isolated position for 16 to 17 centuries, came under the influence of foreigners who came to India seeking their own physical worldly fortune and sometimes with religious intentions. The first group that the Malangara church came into contact with was the Portuguese, who were mostly Roman Catholics. It is part of history that these people who were traders They wanted to make a fortune for themselves and their countries. Ultimately, they tried to influence this ancient church, not just in a brotherly manner, but tried to spread their own faith here, undermining the ancient faith that the Syrian Christians cherished through the centuries. But unfortunately, following the Portuguese arrival in India, came the Protestant groups from different countries in the West. And they too did almost the same. They also wanted to spread, spread their ideas, their faith, and in a way to convert the Syrian Christians into their fold, either as Roman Catholics or as Protestant. And finally, in the end, there was a bond was established between Malangara Church and the Syrian Orthodox Church. And to this day, this bond, which is a checkered history, is continues to plague this church. In many ways, that is beneficial to both the parties. But ultimately, unlike many others, for example, the Persian Church, which was in communion with the Indian Church for centuries, never tried to rule over the Malangara church. 
but the Syrians, like the Portuguese and the Protestants, they wanted to confiscate the church and make it their own. And ultimately, this church resisted such moves, and the one leader who stood up for the community was Saint Dionysius Watershed. In that way, he is the epitome of the freedom of the Malangara Orthodox Church, and he fought tooth and nail with all the forces which try to undermine the real history of this church, and he won. He was left ruined, but he won for the church. Today, as we look back, the church is so grateful, and the church addresses this rare breed of a saint as the illuminator of the church, the Sabha Bhasuran. He is the son who lightened up the entire church, inspired an ancient community to its sense of freedom and autocephaly. Saint Dionysius, in many ways, <clears throat> he was the most intelligent person of his generation, full of brains, and he was daring to challenge anyone, any force, religious or otherwise who is tried to take over the Malangara church. And there is a parallel with this, which is very famous, that while Mahatma Gandhi fought for the freedom of India, St. Dionysius Watasheri fought for the complete freedom and personality of the Malangara Orthodox church. They were in many ways contemporaries. Gandhi is revered as the father of the nation. And what Sheryl Saint Dionysius shall always be remembered as the father of the freedom movement of the Malangara Orthodox Church. And he was trying always not to have any physical fight with anybody, but he would invigorate his community to think about its entity, its personality, and to be free, because the church is born and called to be free. He was convinced of it. And a Syrian head of the church, head of the Syrian Orthodox Church, excommunicated him unreasonably and uncanonically. But he resisted. He was a one-man army. In many respects, he fought and won. And finally, the church is completely free. And among his many contributions for the welfare of this ancient church stands out. One is the Catholicos 8, which is equal to the institution of papacy, Pope in Rome and Alexandria, patriarchs in different countries and Catholicos of different churches. So the Malangara Church was raised to the status of a Catholic state in 1912. And that was a great contribution, something the greatest, perhaps, which Vandashir Latinimani has done for this church. And the church is always proud of its member. He did his church proud. Number two, he was the key person behind organizing a constitution for this church. It was the work of a group of people, and the work on that constitution has already begun, but the final edition of the constitution is always the contribution of St. Dionysius Watershed. He looked ahead and lived ahead of his times and he thought and was determined that this church has every right to be an independent church in independent India. And no one has the right to rule over this church except Jesus Christ. As an autocephalous church, it has its own head. Today, we have the Catholic seat, that precious institution that St. Dionysius held to his, close to his heart. 
and there is a 1934 constitution. And the church today is proud of its memory for the 1934 constitution, especially because in times of litigation, this constitution, a small book, which is perhaps <coughs> the lawful contribution of a great mind to their ancient community. And we stand by the constitution. Years before India had its own constitution, this church organized and evolved a constitution for herself. The constitution of India, its preamble begins like this, we the people of India. Such jargon is not available in the Malangara Church Constitution, but it should be like that. We, the people of the Malangara Church. So it, when we say it's an autocephalous church with an independent church head, the ultimate head of the church is Jesus Christ. And the church is the body of Jesus Christ. And this conviction has been made clear by Saint Gregorius of Parmala, the great saint that his country has produced, perhaps the greatest saint, the first canonized saint in this ancient country. And Saint Dionysius is direct disciple. And he was a student of Saint Gregorius of Parmala. And this saint has his disciple, <coughs> Catholicos Giveri II. All the three are saintly people. Saint Gregorius of Paramala, Saint Dionysius Patasheril, and the Holy Catholicos Giveri II. And all these people are luminaries. <coughs> this church is rich, not in terms of worldly riches, but in terms of faith and holiness. <coughs> Every year, in the month of February, we celebrate the anniversary of St. Dionysius Watershed. He was canonized <coughs> as a saint in 2003 at the place where his bottle remains are interned. That is the oldest seminary, theological seminary, Pote. And that was a big celebration for the church. It is the second time in this 2,000-year-old church when someone is canonized. The first was St. Gregorius of Paramala, who was canonized in 1947, 2nd November, by a disciple of Paramala Thirimeni, Catholic Giverigi II. And St. Watashil Mar Dionysian <coughs> was canonized on 24th of February, 2003 by Catholicos Paselios Marthoma Matthews II. And the church cherishes the memory of this great saint who lived, fought, and died for this church. <coughs> every year people throng to the tomb of the saint. Not every year, every day people approach this tomb and are amazed by the greatest contribution of this single man for the welfare of the Balakada Church. I personally am more than convinced about His Holiness, the sanctity of His life, and the unparalleled contributions He made to India, the Freedom Movement, and also the Freedom Movement of the Malangara Church. May His memory remain forever and a blessing to this church and this country. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.